Summer is coming to an end, and although I'm an avid knitter, I can find these warmer months a challenging time for my favourite craft, which got me thinking about some of the other forms of making I'd like to try when the weather feels just too warm for woolly jumpers. Naturally, the first thing on my list was sewing. I had briefly tried sewing about a year before I started knitting, and found it to be rather daunting. One of the beautiful things about working with yarn is that you can unravel almost all of your mistakes, which means that the stakes never feel quite as high as they do when you're cutting into a precious piece of fabric. At that time, the cost of fabric also felt kind of prohibitive, and I didn't have the confidence to really reuse or refashion some of what I already had. In the spirit of getting over these worries, I've made three different projects, from refashioned, unconventional or challenging fabrics. And to push myself even further, I've also given myself the deadline of my holiday at the end of August. First things first, I want to introduce you to the newest member of my team, which is my Singer Heavy Duty Sewing Machine. I selected this machine as I felt like it was probably a good compromise between something beginner friendly but also powerful. And having previously used a smaller mechanical machine, I was confident that I wouldn't be overwhelmed by a screen with loads of options. And this machine has 23 stitches and an automatic one step buttonhole. Now the other vital tools I purchased for my beginner kit include some super sharp fabric scissors, which I ventured into my little Italian haberdashery for. I also got some fabric chalk, some thread, shearing elastic, pins and a pin cushion. I really couldn't resist this silly little patchwork strawberry, which just has so much character. I made the initial mistake of actually starting without a pin cushion, but trust me, you do need a pin cushion. My first project was a cute ruffled little camisole top that I made using an excellent tutorial from the Essentials Club here on YouTube. My fabric for this piece was a rather sad looking old shirt that I never really wear. Although the material is 100% cotton, I do find that it tends to make a sort of crunchy, crispy sound as I walk due to its oversized fit. Now, as the fabric is quite thin, but also really crisp, I thought it would lend itself well to something slightly textured. Unfortunately, I didn't have quite the right amount, so I had to be a little bit creative and sew the front two pieces together. Now, this meant that I had some buttonholes left over at the bottom of my top at the back, but considering that the fabric is black, I don't think anyone will see it. And if they do, I guess it could be a cute little feature that just speaks to the fabric's past life. Cutting fabric is one of the biggest differences between knitting and sewing. It feels so high stakes and speedy, but I followed the old adage of measure twice and cut once, which left me with the perfect rectangles I needed to create my top. Before I could start in earnest, I had to relearn some of the basic steps of threading my machine and practicing a straight stitch. I tried this on some scrap before pinning my pieces of proper fabric together ready to sew. With those essentials mastered and a big tube created, I felt like the best way to improve was probably to push myself with a new technique. As the idea of creating something fitted with zips or buttonholes still felt extremely scary, I decided to make something with shearing to get my desired look. One of the most thrilling parts of trying out my new machine was definitely using the bobbin winder. Setting up my bobbin and clicking it into place before winding it at high speed was so unexpectedly fun. However, shearing calls for a hand wound bobbin for the bottom thread, so I set about the slightly boring task of winding my elastic onto it. With that done and ready to go, I marked out the lines for my shearing. Shearing? Shearing? I kind of don't really know how to say that. The tutorial's instructions were so easy and clear to follow that most of my initial anxiety didn't really resurface. I also felt like diving in with some simple projects that were explained in a more visual way would probably be easier than using paper patterns because they would allow me to concentrate on the techniques while I was learning them. Once I had marked up my lines, I prepared my machine and I started sewing. The speed of it did come as a slight shock when I first started and I had to pay extra attention to not going too quickly and ending up with wonky all over the place stitches. But after a little bit of practice, I was starting to feel like a real seamstress. Next came the challenge of starting the shearing. To my delight, shearing proved to be not nearly as fussy as it had initially seemed and I was soon making a scrunchy little tube top. 
The only thing left to do for my first project was to add some pretty little bow straps and give it a quick press to bunch up that elastic thread. And here it is, the finished piece. I have to say that I could hardly believe I made something so wearable and cute on my first try. Although there are technical issues with this top, due to my wide placement of the straps and some details which are still visible from the upcycled shirt, I truly love this piece. It pairs so well with my black shorts for a look that's comfortable and slightly dressed up, but I think it will look equally as nice with my jeans, and I just can't wait to wear it on my holiday. Now to my second project, which has to be the crowning jewel in my beginner sewing repertoire. After the success of my first top, I was feeling really quite confident. One could even say too confident. Now, this burgundy toile de juillet is 100% cotton and originally supposed to be a tablecloth, but I was certain that it would look quite nice as a top or a dress. At first, I set out to try and make a gathered milkmaid style dress with a really excellent tutorial from Rosary Apparel. However, once I got to the shearing of this cotton, I noticed that the thickness of it wasn't gathering like my shirt material had. And to make matters even worse, when I tried it on, it was sort of giving potato sack rather than picnic dress. Trying not to get disheartened, I searched for a pattern that would be slightly more suitable for this structured material. And I immediately fell in love with this puffy sleeved blouse by Jess Dang. So I set myself the challenge of making this piece, which features puff sleeves, a gathered section and elastic at the wrist. Yes, um, this was probably over ambitious, but I felt like Jess's tutorial would be the perfect pairing for this stunning material. As it's adorned with bucolic details and pastoral scenes, it does evoke some of the costumes in my favorite period dramas. Overall, this project was definitely a true learning experience. The fabric, although beautiful, did want to fray all the time, which made me understand why some people decide to purchase an overlocker. I also had the issue of losing some of my yardage because of my previous shearing disaster, and I tried to unpick some of it, but felt it would be easier just to cut my losses and try and sew some pieces together instead. One of my earliest challenges was actually trying to get a neat finish on the neckline. Although Jess made it look effortless, the act of double folding the material into a neat tube was actually quite infuriating. I was also starting to get the impression that 90% of sewing is actually faffing about with ironing, pinning or measuring fabric. I wasn't used to pins and I did stab or catch my fingers on more than one occasion. But I will admit that this was probably due to my very poor placement of pins. And as you can see here, I wasn't really using my common sense and I made my life much harder by creating what feels a little bit like a medieval torture device. Working on my top over the following days, it was amazing to see it all come together. The bodice and the neckline section was, thankfully, the most difficult part of the whole project. Once I'd done that, the rest of the sewing process was much more tranquil. And I even followed her instructions to add a pretty detail of some concealed elastic inside the sleeves, which gave them an extra puff. This seemed like such a thoughtful and clever addition, which also helped me understand how one might add elastic to a waistband. With my sleeves puffed and my top freshly steamed, I was ready to take it on its first outing. I have to say that I am really in love with this sweet little top. The puff sleeves were a challenge, but I think that they look just perfect in this fabric. As the material is so stiff, it works extremely well for something that's a little bit more structured. However, the tie detail and getting a neat finish did take quite a bit of concentration and some very careful seam ripping, but I think it really brings it all together. So here it is. And some of you might have had a sneak peek of this top on my Instagram. As always, this is probably the best place to find me and to follow along with my progress before my projects make it into my full videos. Now onto my last project, which might seem simple if you first look at its construction, but was my first attempt at draping fabric and using something which was a little bit more slippery. This piece was entirely inspired by the beauty of this silk that I found at a local fabric shop. And as there was only about a meter and a half, I managed to get it for only 10 euros, which felt like a real bargain and the perfect excuse to try something a little bit more fancy. I did approach sewing silk 
with what can only be described as trepidation. I feel like a lot of online resources seem to stress how difficult it is to cut, pin and sew, so having read all of these warnings, I was extra extra careful when measuring out my pieces. Although this top has a draped front, which really highlights the innate qualities of the material, the tutorial I followed by Anna the Taylor made the process really clear and simple. I'm also aware that there should be a more detailed PDF pattern of this available to purchase, but I felt like I could get on okay just following her video instructions, um, but I will link this down below for anybody who's interested. Despite some of the initial warnings about working with silk proving to be a little bit exaggerated, they definitely were not joking when describing how hard it is to cut. My prized pair of fabric scissors were a really awful match for this slippy material, which wanted to just slide off the table or out of place basically whenever I touched it. Needless to say, I'll probably be investing in a mat and rotary cutter if I want to work with more fine and slippery fabrics in the future. The first pieces that are sewn together for this project are naturally the gorgeous little straps. I will admit that I've actually developed a love for sewing straps, but this was also the area where my dodgy cutting before became most apparent, as I'd cut entirely different widths of fabric for my straps. Luckily I had enough spare, so I cut a new one straight away. And that slightly wonky piece, along with any other scraps I might collect, will probably wait in my sewing box until they're ready to be transformed into scrunchies. Despite my initial issues, I I found sewing the silk much less intimidating than actually cutting it. Once I got going, the material really seemed to fly through my machine, and it created the most beautiful, sharp, neat edges. With the two sides sewn together, I cut off the extra fabric and got to one of the most satisfying parts of any project, which is turning the straps right side out. Oh, I do really love this bit. With my straps ready to go, I commenced with what can only be described as a period of intense faffing and pinning. Silk, as I had been warned, has the tendency to distort and stretch out if handled too much when you're cutting it, which can make it really infuriating to line up when you're pinning and trying to measure bits out. Despite this issue, I carefully placed my straps and started with a few focused hours of sewing them into the garment. I will just note that placing the straps to make sure that their right sides are showing when you're wearing the top is one of the areas of the tutorial that could probably benefit from some clarification. Nevertheless, I carefully muddled my way through the rest of the project and occasionally stopped to check I hadn't caught or misplaced anything. After some very, very focused sewing and a tiny bit of unpicking, I had what was starting to resemble a camisole top. Upon trying it on, I was really happy with the way that the front was hanging and very glad that I'd actually kept the extra length and extra lining because this yellow silk was much more see-through than I had initially anticipated. Although I had some minor foibles, I was starting to feel really proud of how neat this top was turning out. Minus the cutting, the assembly of this camisole took me around a day which might seem like ages to you very experienced sewists out there, but to me it was an absolute miracle. <laughs> As an avid knitter, I'm quite used to having to dedicate weeks, if not months, to actually creating a finished garment, so I find sewing quite refreshing, actually, even if it's occasionally frustrating, because everything is so quick and so seemingly efficient. With my straps in place, I cut my top to my desired length and set about finishing off the side seams. And now the tutorial does roughly allude to what I now understand is a French seam, but unfortunately at the time, due to my inexperience and the white colour of her fabric, I couldn't really make out which sides were supposed to be the outside and which were supposed to be the inside. So as a consequence, one side of my top features a slightly lumpy bumpy seam and the other is a beautiful neat French seam. <laughs> and I've tried not to feel too bad about this mistake because I don't think it's that visible when I'm wearing the top and it was a really really good learning experience. Also, as it was getting dark outside and I was really nervous about the prospect of unpicking and damaging my silk, I just decided to leave it how it was. 
And now for the moment that you've all been waiting for, this is my finished camisole. Although this project had a really steep learning curve, I'm so happy I managed to create something so luxurious and neat. The sections where the straps meet the front and back have to be my biggest achievements, as I think that they look really clean and pretty. Overall, I really like how classy this finished project looks, and I think I'll get quite a bit of wear out of it on more dressy occasions. I will also note that I think it could have been a little bit bigger. The fit is perfectly tailored to my bust size, but that doesn't leave much wriggle room for fluctuations or my larger hips. So do be mindful of that if you're looking to recreate this piece. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end of my video. I am a true beginner, as you can see, when it comes to sewing, but I wanted to share my first few projects and I hope that you enjoyed following along as much as I enjoyed making them. I'm off now to rest my poor fingers that have been attacked by pins and would like to wish you a really wonderful end to your summer. Thanks for watching. Bye!